Emmanuel Amunike has scored for Nigeria. Goal that wins the first ever footballing gold medal for Nigeria. Impressive role to uh, to place Edo State in the continental map. Toby Amazon, look at the clock. I cannot believe it. She's done it again. Two world records in one night, and she makes history by becoming Nigeria's first world champion. Alexa Wobi decides to go early. Should wear it. Shakes the shoot, gets some space, it's Ossiman! Yes, beautiful viewers, we are back once again to bring you up to speed with happenings in the ever-exciting world of sports. My name is Matthew Okube. Plenty making the rounds, especially from the home front. The start for a new coach for the Super Eagles continues as the NFF continues to push the goalposts forward. We hope in the next couple of days, a new coach will be unveiled as the gaffer of the men's senior national team. The guys are in the studio to Nubani. Raymond is also here, as well as the ever delectable uh, Bosse Kafo. The build-up to the Olympics is there, the search for a coach, and several other stories making the rounds in the world of sports from the nucleus of today's package on Sportsville. This and more are the other side. Take off into a world of casino games and find your new favorites. Play a few rounds of roulette and see if Lady Locks on your side. Land those winning combinations in slots and take a hefty bite out of that jackpot. Discover much more games on the One X Bets. We have fortune awaits. Yes, if you just joined us, the show is Sportsville on this ever amazing platform. Not alone in the studio, Tunu Van is here. Okay, thank you so much, Matthew. And indeed, uh, like you said, the wait continues. I think we have really gotten to the most shameful aspect where Nigeria is being ready called. And something has to be done. I think that uh, there should be a meeting of elders. You know, people should come and talk and know exactly, you know, what is holding the Nigeria Football Federation from naming a coach. I think they have uh, gathered everything for the new coach to be appointed so that he will fail successfully. It's a shame. And the Raymond? Yeah. So good to be here for Sportsville. Lovely day. And of course, uh, I hope you guys are having fun wherever you are. At least uh, you can take your mind off uh, the shame. And of course, the worries uh, for Nigeria Football Federation it is quite alarming. But of course, here is the NFL trying to bring us uh, down. But on Sportsville, it's ever 
forward ever for Nigeria. And one lady that is already thinking about the Olympics is Bose Kafu. Yes, I'm always thinking about the Olympics because we have more to showcase. We have a lot to look forward to. This is Bose Kafu. Yes, Bose is setting the tone for the Olympics, but let's also let you in that one expert is the best bookmaker in Nigeria with Every day, millions of players worldwide lock into the platform and place their bets both on football, basketball, boxing, and several other sports. So if you haven't registered yet, one expert has prepared a unique offer for you with as much as 300% increase in your first deposit with the opportunity to receive as much as 145,600 Naira on the go. This kind of chance does not come daily, so don't miss this great opportunity to start with a profit one expert you will win if you don't quit the show is made possible by one expert the message from our brand sponsor tony let's start with cricket nigeria on the map as far as we Akpata and his team are concerned just in the course of the week nigeria was uh bagged the award and icc award based on what we've been able to do with the under 17, especially uh, cricket at the grassroots. Yeah, Matthew, absolutely. I'm not in any way surprised. You know, this is uh, when somebody who knows what he is doing, when people are organized and then, of course, they follow the calendar. People do things they love to do, things that they have passion for. I think that's the reward of what we are saying. And uh, when Akpata came into cricket, we all knew that a Messiah sort of has come into cricket. And then I think that this is also a time for us to lift our shoulders high for Sportsville. When we recognize this, we let the world know. And of course, we gave him an award. And of course, you see that almost everything is just falling into place. He's justifying almost everything. And one thing, Matthew, that marvels me about Akpata and cricket is the fact that the man is a very humble man. And if you go to cricket, if you go to TBS, Tafal Belewa Square, you know, the Oval, you know, what used to be a very rickety, smelly place has turned out to an international ground, you know, where you can be very proud of. And indeed, cricket has soared so high that the international community have realized the growth of cricket in Nigeria. And of course, they have rolled out the drums for him. Like they say in cricket, how's that? Hmm, interesting. Bosse, we are beginning to see the benefits of having individuals with passion, individuals with the the kind of drive that is needed to grow the sport. Cricket finally coming alive in Nigeria. Yes, cricket is uh, the sport that I actually love so much because in London you have to look at the whole bars and, and you look at it and you, you, you really embrace it. But when I came down to, to Nigeria, I couldn't find cricket so, so much until last week. I was at the Nawis and the uh, Nawis game and cricket on the 17th were actually uh, uh playing and yes and i saw mr akbata at the finals and uh, i was able to watch it and i realized that cricket has come to stay in nigeria, nigeria yes and they, they are actually going to score so well because if you look at the the level of women participating in the world of uh, cricket we can see that nigeria nigeria girls can go far and become better and away from cricket let's talk the nigeria football federation uh, in the course of the week, Raymond, five subcommittees had been inaugurated, including the media committee and other committee, and they've been saddled with the responsibility. One charge given to them by president of the Nigeria Football Federation is that they should be they should be uh, they should be proactive. They should put forth advice to grow football in Nigeria and do perform their job diligently. And every recommendation will be implemented according to the NFF boss. Yeah, it's a good one. Definitely good for Nigerian football. I hope that this will help to uh, brighten the dull image of the Nigerian Football Federation. But as far as I'm concerned, the NFF is not a rating high. Talk about, uh, you know, how they comport themselves, how they organize things. Maybe we'll talk about the Super Eagles matter very soon. But uh, definitely, as it has to do with Nigerian football organization, uh, it, it has to do with uh, these uh, committee guys trying to claim that dirty portion dirty angle of the Nigerian Football Federation because they know they cannot really do it alone and I want to believe that uh, most of these guys in now, men and women, they are women of integrity, sure. even though I know that some group are coming from uh, 
opposing uh, uh, factions. Okay. There are some. But we, ha we have our own highly reputable Frankie Laboya. Well, not many of his uh, type. In we that have case. George Alu. We take a look at uh, the yes. committee. You see that there are some of the guys who are either pompous yeah. or full of themselves. Some guys who want to be greedy. Some guys who fight for their interests alone. Some guys who cannot even pick their phones of their colleagues. Yes. Some guys who cannot tell uh, really totally. Uh, so please let you not know, add to the mess in the Yaf Box Federation over this long way for NFF or the coaching crew and all. Yes. Let them go there and try to clean the, the stable that is the Yaf Box Federation. Yes. It is really rotting at the moment. And I want to say a new release of uh, life. Let's hope they will add a new image to the NFF. Tony, talk to us about the relevance of some of these committees. You've been there over the years. This is the first time I looked at the list of committee members and I say Tony Obani is not there. Yeah, well, it's a very good thing. Um, and indeed, I'm really very happy, you know, for them, the committee members. If only uh, Guzo will implement almost all the beautiful ways that he used in showering on the committee members. And indeed, very knowledgeable set of people that I've seen. Let me just talk about uh, the media committee of which I have always been a member. You know, once again, they have, uh, you know, gathered eggheads, you know, from the industry to yeah. be uh, members of the media committee. But I think they will also allow them to function. All the times that I belong to the media committee of the Nigeria Football Federation, I think uh, the only time we walked you know, was just during the inauguration. Yes. And immediately after the inauguration, everybody goes to sleep. After, after the inauguration, there's absolutely nothing you will hear about uh, the committee. You know, I think that uh, those things, uh, explanations were just the fact of uh, funds. But I think this time around with what Guzo is doing and with all the people that have brought in the finance committee, the media committee, George Alloy is there as vice chairman. Yes. He used to be also a permanent member with me, you know, in uh, the other media committees, committees yeah. of the time. I think this time around that he's very close. He should also make it work. With Frank Elaboye, you know, a very reputable person that we all know, you know, I hope that they do well because if they don't do well, the type of person Frank is, he will throw in the towel. towel. And still on the Nigeria Football Federation, we are still without a coach for the Super Eagles. We just weeks to the World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and Benin Republic. So, Ubani, we are still talking about this. Yeah, but we are still talking about it. Uh, and I think that um, it's worrisome and uh, it's a shame. You know, because almost everybody is beginning to begin, you know, to equate Nigerians, begin to think that Nigerians are like this. Because the Nigerian Football Federation is not just coming to know that uh, they will not have a coach. Right from the African Cup of Nations, you know, even before the man went to the Nations Cup, it was Guzo, the NFF president, that told us it's uh, in black and white, you know, that win or lose, that uh, Peseiro will be gone. gone yeah. And indeed, I expected that when you uh, you make also, you, ma you make uh, chances, you make other provisions, you know, for replacement. And it's taking too long. It's a shame. Everybody's asking. And uh, we're just about uh, one and a half months, months, you know, to the matches that are yes. going to play. Is the Nigeria Football Federation not preparing a whip for his back with mm. this, uh, you know, lateness and appointing the coach. And of course, like I told you the other time, when you were staying in the toilet, you wow. begin to see all manner flies. of flies. flies. <laughs> we are seeing so many flies. Yes. And by the time you appoint a coach now, the coach will have a very good reason of, uh, you know, uh, you know, not doing well as a coach. And Raymond, we are still where we are. No coach for the Eagles. Yeah, not a surprise. Not a surprise at all. But I'm really surprised that, uh, you know, we're worried about it. But I know it's never going to change. Just the last week, I saw the NFL president before he headed to France to see players and see uh, notably uh, Victor Moses and all yes. of that. He assured me, he spoke to me at a GTI function. I said, Eagles coach, we announced uh, this week that the week before now. And here we are, still in the same position. So apparently, you know, it's a man I should not take serious any longer because it was cock sure that we should not be worried. I have him on tape. That uh, the coach will announce very soon. One moment is Amoneke, uh, another moment is Finibi, another moment is uh, Se Pesero, another moment is uh, different names here and there. So apparently, the, he, he is not in charge. And if there's any group that is uh, that has really called Nigerian football, the one that has really called the name Nigeria the most, it is Nigeria Football Federation. Last week I said, perhaps they want us to suggest a coach for them. But it's obvious now that the NFL does not know what they are doing and they are bringing more shame. And of course, a dishonor to this great country, Nigeria. Wow. We hope a coach will be appointed soon. 
and we just believed that Nigeria would qualify for the World Cup in 2026. Because anything short of that, I tell you, it will absolutely not be acceptable. As far as the media space is concerned, we just hope we qualify for the World Cup aside this old shenanigans that we are experiencing at this time. We'll see you on the other side. It's this possible. The show is still Sportsville, made possible by one expert. Now let's look at the disparity between appointing a foreign coach and having an own base gaffer. Because over the years, we've seen several local coaches who have been saddled with the responsibility of handling the respective national teams come out to talk about how they were badly treated. Just in the course of the week, we saw an interview of, of Samson Yebuisias here, who talked about how they were poorly paid and the conditions given to them to operate is nothing compared to what is obtainable when the NFF appoints a foreign coach, Tony. Yeah, Matthew, it's a, it's a sad uh, it's a sad commentary. But all the same, I must say that uh, the indigenous coaches, you know, are culpable in this uh, area. You know, because uh, they were always in a hurry, you know, to pick up a job. Most of them would just go to a job without even a contract. That's how desperate our indigenous coaches have become. Because if indeed, you know, they just go through the mail and then ask questions, where is the contract? The contract will now, you know, specify how much you are going to be paid and every other thing concerning your termination and so many other things as we have seen with other contracts in the world of football. But then here, our own indigenous coaches, just because of the dollar, you know, so that there are so much you know, in a hurry for them to go and pick up bonuses, yes. winning bonuses, allowances, and then they leave the major one, which is a contract that stipulates how much they are going to be paid, and then they do not care. I think it is the press that is whipping up this, that is making the indigenous coaches, you know, not begin to even ask and begin to perhaps even equate their salaries with that of the foreign coaches. Ordinarily, once you call a Nigerian coach, come and be a coach of the Super Eagles or come and be a coach of any of the national teams, they will just go without any other thing, hmm. without contract. So now that they're beginning to ask questions, I think that they should get it right between Amunike and those who have applied, you know, for the current Super Eagles, they, they should ask questions. So if it doesn't fit you, come out and talk. Most of them do not even like to speak to the press. It's interesting. Bosse, there was the local coaches at this time, Amunike in the maze, Fididi in the maze. Do they have do they have the strength at this time to begin to negotiate with the Nigeria Football Federation? Not to forget that a plethoral of coaches are also waiting in the weeks. You want to say the bargaining power is not there for an Amunike for a Fididi because other coaches are waiting to also take off the job. I believe that uh, either MNK or, or Finidi, they, they've gotten the right to actually go for the best contract. Remember, these are players that have played abroad yes. and they were contracted. So they should understand the difference between a verbal contract and a written contract. contract yes. So they don't need a verbal contract. They need a written one. Need the to be one clearly they will be clearly stipulated what and what they ought to be doing. Yes. And I believe that regardless of whatever is going on now, yeah. there is a need to really give that job to a, a local Nigeria. Coach. That and is it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You want to you want to say something. Now yeah. let's let's look at it this way. For me, it would be an aberration if you pay a foreign coach that just left the job. The last he, he was sending as much as fifty thousand dollars monthly. And you bring it look seventy thousand dollars. Somebody some holding twenty thousand dollars at a point. Yes, point. As a point. Let's get it clear. Yes, let's get it clear. <laughs> but if you bring in an Amonike, for instance, and you say you want to pay him twenty thousand or fifteen thousand no. dollars, it will be totally unacceptable. No, that will not be fair. That will not be fair. But the question is, would the NFF even be ready to pay as much as fifty thousand dollars to an Amonike? Okay. Would they be ready to give seventy thousand dollars to a Nigerian coach? From what I see, all this drama is about interest. It's about who the NFF will respect. I don't think the Nigerian Football Federation, the way they are now, permit me to use 
Yahoo, Yahoo. Uh, I see them as very, very <laughs> serious. Group. I don't see them as going to respect a Nigerian coach. Be it Amunike, be it a Finidi judge. We, we saw the drama in that friend in Morocco. Yes. Some of those guys who harass the Finidi judge, nothing has been done to them. So it's obvious that if you appoint a Nigerian coach, the players will not respect a Nigerian coach. That is my position. And I'm not going to be here to say we should experiment with a Nigerian coach as far as the Super Eagles is concerned. We talked about the Nations Cup, we lost in Cote d'Ivoire. Perhaps if we must aim higher at the next Nations Cup and even the World Cup, we should have a very credible foreign coach. I don't want a Nigerian coach to be experimented as far as Super Eagles coaching is uh, concerned. That is my position. Let the Nigerian coaches the SS International is not a coaching uh, certificate. Go and no, uh, package yourself, be in charge of a proper team, let's see you win your rest. I will make a case for you properly. Don't call them because you play for the Super Eagles. I want to be a Nigerian coach. I think that's a, a gamble that would be too much. I don't want to accept that. Tony, we're signing up on this. Yeah, we are. I, I think that, um, you know, whether it is, um, you know, $70,000 or $50,000, I think the indigenous coaches should stand there. Yeah. ground one do they have lawyers we have seen nigerian players you know playing abroad that do not even have you know agents most of them do not even know what it is to have an agent so that is exactly what is panning out now anybody who is aiming to be the super egos coach should have a lawyer so it is your lawyer you go through some of these things you know contracts and all those things so it is your lawyer that simplifies things but if a coach agrees to be paid twenty thousand dollars i don't think it's the fault of the nigeria uh, football Federation. That means the coach is, you know, underpricing himself. Yes, interesting. I remember the show is made possible by One X Bet. One X Bet is the best bookmaker in Nigeria at this time. Every day, millions of players worldwide log into the platform and place bets on football, basketball, boxing, and several other sports. If you haven't registered yet, One X Bet has prepared a unique offer for you with over three hundred percent increase in your first deposit and the opportunity to receive as much as one hundred and forty-five thousand six hundred naira. This kind of chance doesn't come along daily so don't miss this great opportunity so start with a profit one expert is the platform to be if you don't quit you will win the message from one expert we are doing a breather at this time and when we return a guest will be joining us at the other side it's this puzzle Take off into a world of casino games and find your new favorites. Play a few rounds of roulette and see if Lady Locks on your side. Land those winning combinations in slots and take a hefty bite out of that jackpot. Discover much more games on the One X Bets. We have fortune awaits. Yes, you're welcome back. The show is the Sportsville and live with us on the show at this time is NFF Head of Education, Dr. Terry Ogwaje. A pleasure having you join us on Sportsville this afternoon. Thank you, Mike Chu. Thanks for having me and hello to your viewers. Yes, we're still looking at uh, the issues of coaching the Super Eagles, but uh, let's quickly take you back. Uh, what we do make uh, that since the era of Clement Westerhoff as well as uh, Joe Bonfrey, uh, no foreign gaffer has truly succeeded with any of the national team. We just saw recently uh, the former gaffer, uh, gaffer Joseph Pissero. Yeah, thank you, Matthew, for the question. It's a, it's a tough one, yes? If the coaches meet their mandates or whatever requirements uh, is given to them by their employer, it's hard for anyone to say they have failed. But the truth is, we all know no foreign coach have won the World Cup. We also know that the last AFCON in Cote d'Ivoire was won by an indigenous coach who happened to be an assistant coach for the team. So with that being said, I... Personally, don't see any need for any foreign coach if we are ready to do the hard work. What is the hard work? The hard work is for us to invest in coaching education. That's why as the head of education for the Nigerian Football Federation, I just finished up the um, designing of the CAF C, B, and A, and we will be going out um, in full force to try to educate Nigerian coaches because I believe charity begins at home. So also with FCAN which I'm a founder of Football Coaches Association of African Nations, we are doing all within our power to recruit, train, and certify coaches across the African continent. That way we can be in charge of our own destiny. 
Terry, Nigeria started slowly the qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup uh, with the delay in appointing a substantive gaffer for the Eagles. Uh, what do you make of Nigeria's chances to nick the ticket for the World Cup? Yes, uh, that's a tough one, which we have discussed at the highest level of the Nigerian Football Federation. Like you said, we have games coming up. And, and, and of course, you know, this is happening in, in, uh, in, in the U.S. where I reside. This is a, 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 a prime dead World Cup with more teams and uh, Mexico, Canada and the U.S. hosting the majority of the games. We must be there. There is no two way about it. The Nigerian people want us to be there. We, as an NFF, we want to be there, and we are doing everything within our power to make sure we're there. And you will, in the next few days now, the uh, NFF and the president will be announcing the new coach of the Super Eagles. And once that is done, all hands will be on deck to make sure we qualify for the World Cup. Lastly, before we let you go, let's talk the Super Falcons. You were with the team in Australia at the last Women's World Cup. Talk to us about your experience, closeness with the team, the girls, and as well as the technical crew. Yes, that, that, was, uh, that was the high, highlight of my career uh, as a coach and as a coach educator. Going to the World Cup is always a big deal. So, yes, there were ups and downs, but I would say it was a great experience. Before the NFF drafted me to the Super Falcons, we were 7 and 0 in all competitions, 7 and 0. So by the time I came in with some minor changes on the administrative side and on the soccer um, technical side, we were able to turn things around. And of course, the whole world saw what we did in Australia. I would get, I would say big kudos to the players. They were resilient. The girls came out strong for Nigeria, no doubt about that. Thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Terry. We hope that uh, subsequently we would also bring you back to a little dwell more on issues around Nigerian football. A pleasure of talking to you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Have a great one. And bye to your viewers. Hello. Hello, Mr. Mike. I'm excited to let you know that you have successfully moved your pension account to Stambik IBTC Pension Managers. I just sent you an email. Please take a look while I go over some of the benefits you start to enjoy immediately. Move to Stambik IBTC Pension Managers today and let us help you retire into your extraordinary future. Call 01 271 6000 or visit www.stambikibtcpension.com for more information. And it's time to talk the Nigeria Professional Football League, our own. Uh, there are reports that the league might be going on break for a month, but fixtures lined up today uh, as we speak. Uh, Duma United will be up against Quara United. The insurance will play at home against Heartland. It will be Gombe United up against Lobby Stars. Shooting Stars will file out against Sunshine Stars. Aimba will be at home against Casina United. To be Aqua United hosting Pillars. Rangers will entertain Plitu United. Sporting Lagos will be in Lagos against Abia Warriors. Baisa United will file out against Rivers United. These are the fixtures lined up today in the Nigeria Professional Football League. But so we're signing out with Karate, the Aisha Zainab Saleh Annual Karate Championship, this time around holds in October. Uh, she also said something in the course of the week that it's going to be much more expansive for 2024. This is one woman that has stayed consistent. She said Nigerians should await an event that several persons would also be proud of. Yes, we need to support her. She needs a lot of support. She was and also uh, a sports uh, villain uh, this year. Yes, and, uh, and uh, we're having more women coming on board of sports. So uh, everybody will be there to support her. Nice one. Interesting. And uh, Raymond was signing out. Yes, yeah, so it's good being here on Sportsville. We hit uh, the nail on the head here. Join us same time, same station next week. Anthony? Thank you so much uh, for being part of uh, Sportsville. And Bosse. Thank you so much. This is Bosse Kafo, your sport analyst. And from this part, remember the conversation continues on all our social media platform and we just saying it just the way it is. I'm remain Matthew Okube in all you do. Continue to keep a positive mindset and keep praying for Nigeria. Bye for now. Emmanuel Amunike has scored for Nigeria. Goal that wins the first ever footballing gold medal for Nigeria.
nothing wrong. So as to place Edo State in the continental map.